5.1 lecture, what are igneous rocks? Let's take a look here. I'm going to go to my note so I can see it a little um, better. All right, if you lived um, near an active volcano, you can literally watch igneous rocks form. A hot molten mass of rock can solidify into solid rock overnight. As you've learned, magma is molten rock below Earth's surface. I don't know if we learned that yet or not, but magma is below Earth's surface. Once magma reaches the surface, it's called lava. Lava is magma that flows out onto Earth's surface. Igneous rocks form when lava or magma cools and crystallizes. In the laboratory, um, most rocks must be heated between 800 degrees Celsius to 1200 degrees Celsius before they melt. In nature, these temperatures are present in the upper mantle and lower crust. Where does heat come from? Scientists theory, uh, theorize that the remaining energy from Earth's molten formation and the heat generated from the <clears throat> decay of radioactive elements excuse me, are the sources of Earth's thermal energy, all right? Remember, in physical science, we talked about all energy comes from the sun. This contradicts that a little bit. Not all energy comes from the sun. Some of it comes, the energy from nuclear decay in the Earth's core and... Um, the mantle, those areas under uh, the surface of the Earth where there is nuclear act, uh, nuclear active decay going on, it causes, or radioactive decay, it causes um, a heat inside the Earth, okay? And that heat melts rock and turns it into magma. There's a lot of factors in it. Moisture content, how much water is in it. Um, what type of elements are involved, okay? And this brings up the composition of magma. So there's different types of magma. Be before we go into that, I want you to see, since you do not live by a volcano, there's certain things you cannot do um, that would be like super duper fun as um, like this right here. I think this would be a riot. Happy Hub Day, ladies and gentlemen. How are you? I'm fine, thanks for asking. Welcome to the Hub, where we show you the most interesting and funny videos floating around the internet. Stay tuned to see what happens when you step on lava. Three, two, one, go. I'm also curious to see what happens when you put a full can of Coca-Cola inside of lava. Any predictions? what happens to the Chef Boyardee can. You see, the lava is so hot, it causes the contents of the cans to heat up and then ultimately explode. Light my tummy. This is some rare footage of some fresh hot lava pouring into the ocean. It causes it to cool almost immediately and then it turns into a bunch of rocks that are just rolled back out into the water. when you step on lava? Yeah, you almost light yourself on fire. This one was crazy. So this was an active volcano in Hawaii and the scientists wanted to go up to the rim of the lake of lava to get some pictures. can see things started to get a little hectic and the scientists stayed a little bit too long so he had to book it down the side of this volcano as the lava came pouring out over the sides he's fine this is the middle of an active volcano on the pacific island nation of vanuatu i'd never heard of it either but it's crazy how close this guy got up to just this raging torrent of lava
Listen to the sound that a volcanic eruption actually makes. Now, this isn't just a bunch of guys skiing down the hill of some resort. No, they are skiing down the side of Onakatan. It is an active volcano on the north side of Russia. It took them several days to climb all the way up there, and there was no ski lift, so they had to do it by hand. That's all for today's video. Big shout out to Dark Storms and Ian. Leave us a comment below and I'll put my favorite one in our next video. Give us a like. Okay. All right. Um, let's see here. Composition of magma. Again, um, there's different types of magma, different types of lava. Okay, and it all depends on what elements there are. The main element, though, is silica. The more silica there is, um, the thicker the lava becomes. The two um, basic types of lava are called Aa -A and Pahoho. So Aa -A is, it, I always um, thought of if you walk on it, it's real sharp to edge edges in that and as you walk you'll be going ah 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 oh ah, it's cutting my feet pahoho is real smooth it has a lot of um not much silica in it and because there's not a, not much silica it flows very smooth okay so let me show you a couple examples um here here's some ah uh -uh lava the heat, I would say, it's uh, what I'm feeling. I'm Notice the jagged anyway, edges. About uh, 130, 140 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's advancing to us. Um, I think it's faster than a turtle can move, but less than a mile per hour. Yeah, this ah uh, does not again, move very fast. Backing up towards Kahukai. That's my crazy neighbor. Get away! Don't get so close. Get, get, would you get away from there? I'm, 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 <laughs> I gotta stop. <laughs> I thought you were smart. Come on. That was smart. <laughs> oh, volcanologist, someone that studies volcanoes, magma, lava, they'll take a little uh, cup and walk right up there and scoop some of that up so they can study it. I've seen that done before. That is a uh, uh, very, um, very high amount of silicone in it. Very high amount of silica. Okay. Now let's take a look at uh, Pahoho. And you'll see complete and total difference here. Pahoho moves very fast. It's almost, uh, it's more watery. Uh, the less, you can see it here, the less silica, the um, smoother or uh, the more it flows. Okay, And this is pretty slow, even for Pahoho. Like you can see, no jagged edges. It's just nice and smooth. Some people will call it ropey because it looks ropey down in here. In the previous video where it was running into the ocean, that was also Pahoho. It was really smooth, ropey. You can see how Pahoho will almost make rivers in lava. Um, the thinner parts will flow much more rapidly. Anyway, that gives us an idea of the difference between um, Pahoho and um, 
Uh uh-uh. uh. Okay, magma formation. Um, magma can be formed by either melting in the Earth's uh, crust or melting in the mantle. This is huge, though, right here. Four main factors. Four main factors involved in the formation of magma are temperature, pressure, water content, and the mineral content that makes up that magma. All right. Temperature increase, known as geothermal gradient, is plotted in figure one. Here's the, um, and remember, all, all elements melt and um, they will melt at different temperatures, okay? They melt at different temperatures. That's why temperature is important. Um, the temperature increase, um, known as geological gradient, is right here in figure one. Pressure also increases with depth. This is a result of the weight of overlying rock. Laboratory experiments show that a pressure on a rock increases. Its melting point also increases. Thus, a rock melts at 1,100 degrees Celsius at Earth's surface will melt at 1,400 degrees Celsius at depth. The third factor that um, affects this formation of magma is water. Rocks and minerals often contain small percentages of water, which changes the melting point of the rock. As water con- content increases, the melting point decreases. The more water, the easier it is to melt. Mineral content. In order to better understand how the types of elements and compounds uh, present give magma its overall character, it is helpful to discuss the fourth factor in more detail. Different Minerals have different melting points. Different minerals have different melting points. This will cause partial melting, right? Um, Partial melting is illustrated in figure three, right here. The process whereby some minerals melt at relatively low temperatures while other minerals remain solid is called partial melting. And that's where this comes in. This is what the homework's over. Bowen's reaction series illustrates the relationship between cooling magma and the formation of minerals that make up igneous rock. Bowen discovered two main patterns or branches of crystallization. The right-hand branch is characterized by a continuous, gradual change of mineral composition in feldspar groups and an abrupt change of mineral type in iron-magnesium groups. And that's on um, this side, okay? So we have the um, feldspar and we have the iron rich uh, branches of Bowen's reaction series. You're going to learn more about that in the homework. Iron rich minerals. The left branch um, of this talks about the iron rich minerals. The more iron there is, the red or more orange the rock is going to be. All right. And then there is the feldspar branch. And again, this is going, you need to read this stuff, all right? We get what's called fractional crystallization. When magma cools, it crystallizes in the reverse order of partial melting. That means whichever, as it's cooling off, whatever has the highest melting point will solidify first, okay? Um, And you'll get these solid pieces in magma. This process called fractional fractional crystallization is similar to partial melting in that it com, uh, composition of magma can change. All right, it can change with partial melting. Um, go over this partial melting, and then um, again, really concentrate on reading Bowen's reaction series. It's going to tell you how minerals settle out first, which minerals crystallize first. And um, again, you're going to want to know this for the homework. 